Speaker, we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For the benefit of our one respondent representative here today, my name is Drew Spith. I am the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate. My role in these proceedings, I'm not an employee of the town. I'm a lawyer in private practice. I've been practicing local government law for about 22 years. My role in these proceedings is to serve as the independent trier of fact. So the way we'll proceed today, the Code Enforcement Department will present their case. I'll listen to everything they have to say, receive the evidence they have to present to me. If you have any evidence to present, I'll look at the evidence you have, uh, hear anything you have to say. You have the opportunity to ask the city's witness any questions, should you have any. Um, and that's how we'll go. It's it's an informal process. Don't be nervous, and, and uh, happy to have you here. And with that, clerk, you may call the first case. Case number. So go ahead and call it. I'll swear them in once you call it. Case number 2024-197, Margaret H. Harrison, owner, location of violation 400 Maryland Avenue, St. Cloud, Florida. So I'm going to swear everybody in and just a mass swearing, ma'am. So if you'd stand up and raise your right hand, I'll get you sworn to... It'll just be out of the way. Do you all swear from the testimony you give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Good afternoon. Melissa Howes, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of St. Cloud. I am presenting this case for the property located at 400 Maryland Avenue. At this time, I would like to enter into evidence a copy of the notice of violation sent out by regular mail copy of the notice of violations sent out by certified mail posted on the property and city hall copy of the statement of violation and notice of hearing sent by certified mail posted on the property and city hall a copy of the PowerPoint presentation affidavit of postings evidence of mailings the code sections in violation of a copy of the deed to the property and a copy of the cost incurred if the magistrate finds the respondent in violation in the amount of $312 and 69 cents. The representative for the respondent is here and has been provided copies. On January 26, 2024, I received a complaint from the next door neighbor of this location stating that the property is not being maintained at 400 Maryland and the overgrowth of landscaping and trees is out of control. He also stated that the pool was black with plant material and the mosquitoes were really bad. He said he had lived there for two years and the property had not changed. I went out to the property, met with the neighbor to take photos. There is a privacy fence on the property, in, but however, it is in violation because the fence is not being maintained. So there were areas open to take photographs. Ten photographs were taken of the violations. I, I see the vegetation, but as you go through these, just tell me what, what it is you want me to see. I, I, see the, I see the vegetation, but can you give me a little context as you go through I these? I put it at the very bottom of the screen, um, plant material that is actually growing through the screen enclosure. Um, uh, thank you, because now I see the screen. You closer. see it? Yeah, I didn't the, see that. I, I, I see okay. the beams now. I apologize, yeah. yeah. And I lost count, so I'll go till the 20. But, yeah, it's it's it was definitely overgrown. I see now. Yeah, I, I, did, I was not initially seeing those beams, but now I see the relationship to the screen enclosure. Okay. This is up. That, that, that was, was on the top house. of their house, yeah. This is the neighbor's house or the respondent's the house? The respondent's house. The neighbor has trimmed everything back. Okay. Um, upon returning to the office, I reached out via telephone to the number on file for the owner of the property, but no one answered and there was no voicemail set up. On January 29th, I created a notice of violation and I sent it out by regular mail, giving the owner of record 10 working days to correct all the violations. On February the 8th, a reinspection was performed and none of the violations had been corrected. I tried calling the number on file again with no success. On February the 12th, I created another notice of violation to send out by certified mail. I reached out to the owner of the property that is in the rear of this property, if that makes sense, to get permission to walk on her property 
to take photographs uh, to get a better view of the pool from her side of the property. She gave me permission and advised that the mosquitoes were terrible and no one had lived there for three years. So I then posted the property and City Hall, did an affidavit of posting, and took nine photos. That screen enclosure, that are there gaps in the screen enclosure? Yeah, screen? there's there wasn't hardly any screens on it. Are there are there gaps at ground level? Yes. Okay. On February 16th, I received a call from the owner of the property stating she is not at her home that shows on the property appraiser site. She is in an assisted living facility and just received my notice. She gave me the address of the facility and contact number. She stated that she had a friend that was going to start cleaning up the property and wanted to know if I could work with her. She stated that she will start with the clearing of the trees and vegetation, take the pool enclosure down, and fill in the pool because the pool pump doesn't work. Then she will probably put the property up for sale. I explained that as long as I seen progress with the property, I would work with her. She said she understood. <clears throat> on March 1st, a reinspection was performed, and there were a lot of trees removed and cut down. I spoke with the neighbor who advised he had been helping the other neighbor that the owner had hired in cleaning up the property to help this get cleaned up. I took 10 photographs while I was there. So far, it looks like pretty marked improvement. Uh, yeah, major on that side. They got the backyard. What's the date on that? 3 1 24. Okay. For some reason, I can't see the date from 3 22. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay. After returning to the office, I reached out to Margaret and advised her that I had performed a reinspection and that I did see a lot of progress had been made and that I would extend the case out for two more weeks. On March 22nd, I checked the property again, and there was more improvement. Six photos were taken. So I'm on the second. second. Okay. Third. On April the 8th, I received another complaint from the neighbor next door stating that the owner had not done anything since the last inspection I performed. He stated that the mosquitoes were getting bad. I went to the property and took four photos and then called the owner of the property. She said that the person helping her had a lot of personal problems going on and hadn't been able to help her. She stated she couldn't find a contractor to fill in the pool um, and ask me for recommendations. I told her I couldn't give any recommendations but to call the local pool companies and if they didn't do that type of work, maybe they could recommend someone. I explained that if I didn't see work progressing, my next step would be to go to the special magistrate. I extended her time out for two more weeks to see improvement. Those were the four photos that I took. On April 25th, Margaret called stating she had some folks wanting to purchase the property and that the person helping her put five gallons of chlorine on top of the pool cover where the water is sitting and put out foggers for the mosquitoes. She needed to make some decisions on which route she was going and would continue to work on these violations. On May 9th, I went by the property and took two photos. The growth was starting to come back. On May 10th, I called Margaret and advised that the growth was returning. The pool water did not appear to be any better. The screen enclosure was still up and I was going on vacation. And upon returning at the end of the month, if the violations were not corrected, I would be scheduling to the special magistrate in June. On May 28th, I received a call from the neighbor saying while I was on vacation, there was a fire at this location, and now the property has no electricity. A reinspection was performed, and the screen enclosure was removed, and I verified that there was an attic fire inside the house, and I took 11 photos. Is there any barrier between that pool and... 
No, sir. That's where they pulled the meter. Um, I, I will say this. The pool is actually covered. There is a cover on it, believe it or not. How deep that water is, I don't know because the growth is growing. Um, I called the owner and told her that I had done a reinspection and that the property was not in compliance. I explained to her that I would be issuing a statement of violation and notice a hearing for today's magistrate meeting. She wanted me to give her more time and I explained to her that I could not extend the time out any further. On May 31st, I sent out a statement of violation and notice the hearing by certified mail, posted the property in City Hall, did an affidavit of posting, and took two photos. What's the date on that? Okay. Oh, there's where I posted on the property. Okay. On June 7th, I completed a reinspection and took five photos showing noncompliance. One of the other neighbors came over and advised that she was the person helping the owner and that they were going to get the materials that day to get a gate up and fix the fence areas that needed fixing. She stated that they do have someone coming to drain the pool and fill it in as soon as they can get it on their schedule, and she would also be spraying the vegetation. And you can see the screen enclosure is down. Mm -hmm. But that's the fence. It is the city's recommendation that the respondent be found in violation of allowing the exterior property areas to be unmaintained for quite some time to include overgrown landscaping, pool equipment not operable, pool water in an unsanitary condition, and the fence not structurally maintained by the time specified. The city would also like to give the respondent until July 8, 2024 to correct all the violations or pay a fine in the amount of $250 a day until compliance is met. The city would also request that the costs incurred in bringing this case before the magistrate in the amount of $312.69 be paid within seven days of the written order by the special magistrate. And that concludes my presentation. The neighbor who is the representative is here. She is the one I spoke to on June 7th. Hi. I'm Shelley Watson. I'm here representing Margaret Harrison of 400. First of all, thank Maryland you for County. being here and thank you for helping. Oh, you're welcome. Um, first, Margaret has been in an assisted living facility for the past three years and has not been at any of the addresses where the information was sent, unfortunate. Um, it is, but she did hire people to take care of the property. They did not take care of it. Unfortunately, they took care of her. She's an elderly woman who's disabled and living out of the area. Um, in February, when we saw the first sign go up is when I got it and I sent it to her. I took pictures of it and I sent it and I said, hey, something's going on here. Um, and she asked if I could help out. I did start doing a little bit, but then I had two sisters who were terminally ill who went on hospice that I took care of um, until they passed away, which was the last one passed away on the 24th of May, which is when I put up the fence and cut down the rest of the trees, treated the rest of the water, um, and tried to take care of as much as I you know, could on the property. And we're still taking care of it. Some of the growth is coming back, but I've been treating it and I will continue to do so. We have reached out to um, a local contractor who does who tears up pools, um, and we did get one quote from him. I'm looking for another company to get another quote because his quote was very high. Um, and once we get those quotes in place, we'll make a decision and, and go from there. That's, you know, she's, like she said, she has somebody who wants to buy the house, but she wants to make sure that they don't want the pool before she sells or before we destroy it. So she's kind of in that area as well. The fence has been fixed. Um, I showed pictures to the ladies. So the fence is, com the yard is completely blocked and cannot be accessed from the outside. And that was my primary concern, mm -hmm. so that's good to hear. Yeah, so that's, that is taken care of. Do you have any, any sense at all of the time you guys are going to need to get the rest of the cleanup done? <sighs> because there was a fire, um, 
now there's a little bit more that needs to be done. There's no electricity in the house. Um, I'm trying to get the stuff out there. The ceiling fell in, in in a couple of the rooms. So I'm trying to get the stuff out of those rooms for her as well. As for the yard, um, we're going to try to stay up on top of it as, as much as we possibly can. But I really don't have control over the pool. It's up to Margaret to make that decision. All I can yeah, do is provide I under, her with. Yeah, I, can't, there's, I can't tell you to do anything. Yeah. And so don't think that anybody here, everybody appreciates that. I mean, you're a good Samaritan. So nobody can hold anything you do against you. So Just appreciate I'm, the help. I'm, I'm providing her with their information. I'm reaching out and talking to people I can to see about getting it up. But because the pool is so close to the house, she's concerned that it'll have some kind of structural um, issue. And you guys have probably talked about it, especially this time of year and especially with the weather mm -hmm. we're moving into right now with yeah. no electricity that house, mm -hmm. it's only a matter of time until mm -hmm. mold gets in there, especially yeah. if there's any... I have fans, battery-operated fans and foggers in that house to make sure that we don't have any problems. Um, even, even with that, I'm, without something dehumidifying it, the longer it stays, you know, without AC running, dehumidification running, it, you could, she could lose the whole thing. It, it could very quickly over the summer get to a point where it's unsalvageable. So it is really critical as fast as you can get contractors or she can get contractors out there to get the work done. It's I, really critical. I will let her know that, absolutely. Um, I am also treating the pool. There's the mosquito tablets, so I've been putting the mosquito tablets in. And I've been monitoring it monitoring them as well. I have a mosquito thing out there that kills mosquitoes, so I look at it to see how many it's killing. Of course, there's no electric now, so that can't be plugged in, but um, I did see a, a bit of a change, and, and I just want to add that, you know, we live in Florida, uh, two blocks, three blocks from the lakefront, there's going to be mosquitoes. Yes, there, there are mosquitoes because of the pool, but we are treating it and, and trying to take care of that. Well, as I see the evidence, and I mean, we all see the same evidence, there's clearly a violation. And, and all I can do here is, first, I find there's a violation, then I give a reasonable time to cure. I, I'm inclined to give a little bit more, not much more. You've asked for, I think, June 8th. I'm looking at the calendar, or July 8th, and I'm thinking July 12th, because it's the Friday, it gives that one extra week. Uh, if they're gonna if they're gonna fill fill in that pool, that's gonna require a permit, so that mm -hmm. they might need a little extra time there. But really, I know, I know she would like as much time as, as we can get. You'd like to stay on top as best you can, but the reality of it is what I'm looking at, you can't do, you can't do the work that needs to be done, yeah. and you're not going to pay a contractor. It's, it's really on her to take care of it, and she really needs contractors. Yeah. So I am going to enter an order, and unless, unless you know of and can tell me some reason to, that I should give a little bit more time than July 12th, I'm looking at July 12th as, as the compliance Well, I date. do have a reason why okay. it should go a little bit longer. I would like to see it until the end of July simply because I'm handling it and because I'm working for a contractor and I know how long it's taking to even get bids and quotes in. It took me three months just to get a quote from one contractor. I so, you know... Anything from any any response to the city for that request to the end of the month? She's got the fence up now. That's why I was thinking too. Secured. If the, if it was open, I would I yeah. would not. But since they've closed in the pool, yeah. I'm a little bit inclined to give a little bit more time if code enforcement doesn't have a good reason. Me not to. No, I I mean, if 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 I I can talk to Shelley about maybe throwing some shock or something, chlorine shock on top of that tarp Do or that cover. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. or or something, because I mean, obviously, at least with the cover, it's going to keep the mosquitoes down. It's what's on top of it that is creating the issue. Well, it's so. almost gone. Well, after yesterday's rain, probably okay. not, but it had dried out. Oh, okay. so but. So yeah, I, with it being secured, and if she can stay on top of that overgrowth, I'm good with that. So that, that will be my order then, a compliance date of July 31 for everything. And if not brought into compliance by that day, a fine of $250 per day will run until it is brought into compliance. So it'll get expensive very quickly if those violations aren't cured. You already are. And again, I, I, I hate to tell you to do anything because you're already doing more than you have to do. But stay in touch with code enforcement. Let them know what's, you know, they can, they can help. And, you know, as long as they see progress there, they get a little bit less happy I feet to, to see movement. I know, so long. And it's, it's an unfortunate circumstance. Yeah. It's, just a, it's just a tough case. She I recognize really it for no everybody. I sent her the do we have, and in your statement of violation notice of hearing, do you have in here an address, a, a good address for the respondent now? She did give me one. Is that in this statement of violation? 
is it what it, is um, it either of these addresses in the statement of violation? Because I want to make sure that I send my order to a see. good address. Because she actually gave and me that. Just so address. you know, ma'am, there will be an order that that is mailed to the respondent. That's why I'm making sure I have the right address to mail it to, so that it gets to her and so that she can see it on what I'm ordering today. Sure. Uh, absolutely. So when I send it to you, if you want to email it to her, you can e you can email it to anybody you want to. So does that work for you? Shelly, can you write your email? Address? Yes. The bottom address of 3333 South Atlantic Avenue, Unit 906. That is, the, that's that the is a good address. Okay. It was actually signed for um, this last time. So I think she has a friend monitoring up there that address. Okay. Okay. And I will, I will also oh. order the award of res uh, the city's... Yeah. Costs incurred in prosecution. However, I'm going to tie that. I'm actually going to delay that until the end of August because, to the extent she needs to be spending money on something, I want her to be able to be spending her money on getting contractors out there to deal with the code violation. So I will, I will award that those costs, but I'm going to delay the payment of those until That's after right. the compliance date. Do you have a date in uh, let's say August 30th. Okay. That's the last Friday of the month. Anything else in that case? No, sir. Thank you. Case number 2024-659, Foothill Properties, LLC, owner, location of violation, 4261 13th Street, St. Cloud, Florida. Melissa Howes, Code Enforcement Officer. Just before you start, uh -huh. we had a Dollar Tree case last month, right? Yes. Is this the same property? It is... Well, it's the same. No, okay, it's not the same property. Okay, that that was that. I just wanted to make sure of that. Okay. So April brought that one, and they actually own the property. So this one is owned by somebody else. Okay. Um, so at this time, I'd like to enter into evidence a copy of the notice of violation sent by regular mail, copy of the notice of violation sent by certified mail, copy of the statement of violation and notice of hearing sent by certified mail, posted on the property in City Hall copy of the PowerPoint presentation, affidavit of posting, evidence of mailings, the code sections in violation of, a copy of the deed to the property, and a copy of the cost incurred if the magistrate finds the respondent in violation in the amount of $270.88, and the respondent is not here. On March 20th, 2024, after receiving a list of delinquent business licenses, this location for the Dollar Tree store did not renew their business tax receipt or certificate of use license. I sent an email to the business to see if compliance could be met prior to issuing any notices. On April the 8th, the city computer systems went down for over two weeks, so no renewals would have been accepted. I checked again on April 18th and the licenses had not been renewed. I sent out notice of violations to the owner of the property, the owner of the business, and to the business itself to correct these violations within 10 working days. On May 7th, the licenses were still delinquent. I sent out notice of violations by certified mail, which was signed for on May 10th, putting the date for compliance on May 18th, I think. I have 8th here, but that's not right. Um, on May 29th, it must have been the 28th. On May 29th, the licenses were still delinquent. On May 30th, 2024, I sent out a statement of violation and notice a hearing for today's magistrate hearing, posted the property in City Hall, did an affidavit of posting, and took one photo. On September 25th, a reinspection was performed, and Officer Bennett was able to verify. Oh, I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. On June 10th, the licensing department informed me that they had received a check for the licenses for all three locations because I had another case coming. So it is the city's recommendation that the respondent be found in violation of allowing a business to operate with a delinquent business tax receipt and certificate of use license at this location by the time specified. 
The city would also request that the cost incurred in bringing this case before the magistrate in the amount of $270.88 be paid within seven days of the written order by the special magistrate. And that concludes my presentation. I, th I think you testified to this just to make sure that I heard it correctly. They did not, the, the BTR was not paid within the time allowed in your notice of violation. Correct. That came in after, correct? Correct. Anything else? That's it. And based on the evidence testimony presented, I will find in favor of the city, find that the respondent was in violation for failure to pay business tax receipt and obtain certificate of use license for the location prior to the time required and prior to the time allowed, the, the additional time allowed in the notice of violation. Find that they have since cured the violation and are now responsible for the cost incurred by the city in the amount of $270.88. That amount will be due within seven days from the date of my written order. Thank you, sir. Case number 2024-792, Andrade Home Properties, LLC owner, location of violation, 806 Delaware Avenue, St. Cloud, Florida. Good afternoon, Pam Neal, City of St. Cloud, Code Enforcement Officer. I am presenting this case for the property located at 806 Delaware Avenue. At this time, I would like to enter into evidence the following items. Copy of the notice violation sent to the owner and the tenant, Copy of the notice violation sent by certified mail to the owner. Copy of the statement of violation and notice of hearing sent by certified mail to the owner. Copy of the statement of violation notice of hearing with the new date sent by regular mail to the owner and posted on the property and city hall. Copy of the affidavit of posting, a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, evidence of mailings, copy of the deed to the property, copy of the code sections in violation, copy of the costs incurred if the special magistrate finds the respondent in violation in the amount of On April 19, 2024, I received a complaint about a blue car parked at this location that is inoperable. While verifying the vehicle, I also noticed there is a tenant with no active landlord license. On April 22, a notice of violation was sent to the owner and the tenant. On May 6, the reinspection was performed and the car was gone, but there is still no active landlord license. On May 6, the notice of violation was sent by certified mail to the owner and in care of the registered agent. On May 28th, I checked, and there's still no active landlord license. On May 28th, 2024, a statement of violation notice of hearing was sent by certified mail to the owner. On June 3rd, I checked, and there's still no active landlord license. Um, on June 3rd, a statement of violation notice of hearing with the new date was sent to the owner and posted on the property in City Hall. An affidavit of posting was completed, and a fo one photo was taken. On June 10th and 12th, I checked and there are still no active landlord license. It is the city's recommendation that the respondent be found in violation of allowing rental property without obtaining a landlord business tax receipt at this location and to give the respondent until June 26, 2024 to obtain the license or to pay a $250 day fine until compliance is met the city would like to also recover the costs incurred in bringing this case before the special magistrate in the amount of $216.96 to be paid within seven days of the written order of the magistrate. And that concludes my presentation. You had any communication whatsoever from the... Yes, actually owner? the owner called me yesterday and told me that she was working on getting the license. So I gave her the email address and how to do it, but I checked right before we came and... She still hadn't did it, but I think she'll get it before the 26th. Okay. Is And there's no reason, we're, we're not aware of any reason why those would not issue once paid for? No. Okay. Um, based on the testimony presented, then I'll find in favor of the city. I am going to make one modification to your request. The city has requested $250 per day. Should they not come into compliance, I'm going to lower that to $100 per day, just given the nature of the, the violation. There's been no safety issues or anything like that. And, and so it seems like the response hopefully is moving in the right direction. But I will order the recovery of costs in the amount of $216.96. That amount we do within seven days of the date of my written order. And... 
compliance date you had asked for June, June 26th. 26th. Mm -hmm. I will order that compliance date as the compliance date, June 26, 2024. Okay. Anything Thank you. The city? Thank you. Unfinished business, none. Oops, sorry. Reduction of lien under 50,000. Case number 2020 716 Edward Thurman. Owner, location of violation 316 Pennsylvania Avenue, St. Cloud, Florida. Jack Morgison for the city. Uh, the first case for a reduction is a uh, for seeking your authorization to accept the settlement reached by the respondent and city manager. Um, after a little bit of back and forth, uh, City manager proposed accepting $1,316.20 to be paid within 30 days of your acceptance, which was uh, then accepted by the respondent. This dealt with uh, fines that had accrued up to $37,300 and administrative costs. Compliance date was met September of 2021. It's been out there for a little while. So, What was the uh, original violation? It was um, repairs. Uh, uh, I, see it. Yeah, I see it there. Residential dwelling uh, without proper maintenance and repair. And based on the uh, presentation by the city, I will authorize that reduction of liens. Okay, thank you, sir. Reduction of lien over 50,000, case number 2024-69, Cipriani Rene Borelli and Ada Luz Borelli, owner, Nelsie Adeline Borelli and Samuel Cruz, owner, location of violation, 500 Pennsylvania Avenue. Jack Morgison for the city. Uh, this case was heard by you in February of this year. It was a grass uh, weeds violation. Uh, compliance was reached. In May of this year, May 8th, total fines accrued. This can't be right. Am I misreading this? A fine the amount of 500 per day. It was back. It was relating back to a violation. I apologize. Um, the accrued fines I'm showing in the settlement were back, were as much as 59,500 with administrative costs of 269.23. For a total of $59,769,000, um, the respondent had made a proposal to resolve the matter for essentially 10% of the accrual, and the city manager countered with a, an amount of $6,218.93, which was then accepted by the respondent thereafter in June, June 3rd. So they came to an accord of $62,1893 on this case. It was a repeat case uh, at this location, 500 Pennsylvania Avenue. Is there additional information I need to share with the magistrate on this? Did I leave something out? The pool and the grass. The pool and the grass. I apologize. Okay. And, but it was a repeat. It had gone back. It was. And I think that speaks to the, the uh, amount. Yeah, that, that's the amount. Accrued as fast. There was right. Back, it was backdated and there was $500. Correct. So I apologize. That, so. that was the information I didn't provide, nor did I. I, 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 I got that out of the agreement. <laughs> right. Yeah, but, yeah. Exactly. So, and this is a recommendation on to yep. council if, if this meets, meets with your approval. And based on the presentation by the city, I will make that recommendation to the city council. Thank you, sir. Nothing further. Madam Clerk. New business none. Next scheduled meeting, July 17, 2024. Anything else from the city? No, sir. And we are adjourned. Thank you again for bumping and giving me that little bit of extra time. It made all the difference in the world today. Thank you so much. <laughs>